Okay, so uh, the so the uh, the session is currently being recorded right now. I hope that Elsie, Elsie, you're muted uh, speaker-wise and video. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to unmute yourself. Oh, there you go. Hi. But I, we can't hear there you. Oh, oh, Sorry. There you go. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. It's Elsie. Nice to you? meet everyone. Hello, Elsie. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. So. Uh, this is not about me talking. I'm here to support you. Uh, now, what? Tell me, what are some of the areas that you're hoping to sort of get organized now that we have this time at home? Anybody? Well, oh, I, I take your course a couple of times, and the I was we were all set the last time, and then something came up, a, a personal something of yours, and and it was canceled. So right. I'm I'm new to staging, so. Um, I'm just probably going to be doing a lot of listening and, and hopefully you guys will have some great questions. Yeah. Well, well, today is more, we're not talking about staging. It's more about just the decluttering, the organizing. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm, I, the, the re purpose of this call is I just want to give back to the community. Obviously I'm not out there working with clients right now, but I, this, this is a perfect time for us to be doing our own organizing since we do have the time and we're at home. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are doing work at the same time, but sometimes you just need to do something a little bit different. And so, you know, this morning as I was listening to other webinars, I was actually, you know, organizing some of my own bookshelves and stuff like that. And so, you know, we, we have the time now and you might as well utilize it to uh, to get stuff organized. Things like, you know, you always put aside because you didn't have time, things were too busy, family, kids, work and whatnot. But now, you know, you have time and you know, the kids are home. So you can actually get them involved in that aspect as well. Um, it, it, whether it's their own space, their own playroom, their desk, their room, whatnot. Um, this is a time to get everybody involved and it'll be a little bit different than, you know, what we're all doing and the kids are sitting around watching a lot of TV and playing a lot of video games, right? So, yeah, so okay. anybody else? Can I? Said, if that's okay. Um, yes. I'm home with my kids, as probably many are. So we have a, a room that is kind of like a playroom. We call it the playroom. Uh, <laughs> and it's kind of a disaster. Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's a disaster. I mean, I, I have aspirations for it to be more organized and neat. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying to get ideas online with like Ikea hacks and things like that, using like the calendar, the Expedit, you know, the old, you know, eight hole thing to organize. Mm -hmm. But I guess we're just trying to also make it maybe a slash office working mm -hmm. for them too. Now that I'm home, I'm realizing I actually maybe need that. And I'm just trying to figure out how to start. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so having, having that, yeah, I, I'm all for, uh, can I answer this one first before I get to you, Michael Sue? Um, so having multiple, uh, uh, multi-use spaces is, is a great idea in a lot of cases uh, in, in your home. However, adding or combining a playroom space with an office is never a good idea. Okay. Especially this time when we're all home, when you're trying to work and your kids are trying to be in the playroom playing, it's never a good idea. Um, so if you have a different space where you can set, I am hearing some feedback. Is there some TV? Whoever has background noise, that's me. <clears throat> oh, could, yeah. could I just ask you to turn that off a little bit? No, she can mute herself. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. So um, having, the, uh, having the separate space so that you can actually work and the kids can play freely so that you're not interrupted, right? Especially when you're doing more video calls and things like that. In terms of the IKEA hack, um, I, I would recommend that you worry less about that sort of stuff until you figure out, I always tell my clients this, first you need to declutter. You need to first Get rid of the stuff that you and your kids no longer use, need, want, love. Get rid okay. of that first. Then whatever's left, that's when you can determine how much storage space you can mm. need. Because yeah. like, it's kind of like the chicken and the egg scenario, right? Mm -hmm. so, so do that first. And then hopefully once you declutter, there's going to be a lot less. And then they're often, with my clients anyway, often the existing storage solutions that they already have in the home 
is more than enough to store what's left, right? So don't go out and buy more stuff right now. First, focus mm. on the decluttering. Does okay. that help? Yeah. Michael Sue? So I had a couple of things. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for what you just said. And the reason I walked away was I have here about six purses <laughs> and I can sit here, right? So when Nina said, when she was on a call this morning, she was doing some other things. So that's great because I can do, I can de, uh, go through these purses while we're on the call. And secondly, I am actually busier than I've ever been because I'm a clinical social worker and I'm providing counseling, what you can pay for everybody and free for first responders. So I'm insanely busy, mm -hmm. uh, but I find on a good day like today, I go for even a 15 minute walk between appointments, but on a rainy day, <laughs> then that's when I love to have mm -hmm. a small project, mm -hmm. like decluttering these purses. That's right, A yes. small project, and mm -hmm. just for any of you who maybe are new to Nina, I've already worked with Nina and she was an absolute godsend. So I'm very grateful you're doing this as well. Yes. So here's, here's the thing, we're all home right now and we're all housebound and going a little bit stir crazy. So I don't, you know, I, and we're, we're all a little bit stressed because of the uncertainty of everything that's going on. So don't put a lot of stress on yourself, right? You know, um, you know, pick a small project. Like uh, every week I've been trying to sort of, um, I, if you follow me on Facebook, then you'll see that I've been sending out little small little challenges uh, every week. The, I think on Tuesday I sent us out a challenge for you to declutter a junk drawer, just one junk drawer. Pick a small space to start with, and then that way you've accomplished something that day, right? So pick one or two projects a week to declutter uh, and you know build it and you can actually make it fun with the kids you know so if they have toys that they don't play with anymore but you don't think that they're quite ready to let go and there's still some longevity left with those toys I pack it away in a bin and call it the rainy day bin right sometimes when you put away for a couple of months and you pull it back out again those things are brand new again and they're going to have loads of fun with it, right? But you don't have to have all of those things out all at once because then it just adds to the clutter within that space. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anybody else have any other questions? Like, is there any specific spaces in your home, any rooms that you're having a little bit of challenge with? Or any specific thing that you're having challenges with, letting go and whatnot? Well, I, I would say, you know, unfortunately, the usual, everything. I mean, <laughs> there's something in every room that I need to do. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I have found you to be a fantastic motivator. <laughs> I 100% agree that if you can do small things, a small project, mm -hmm. that, you know, you feel a sense of accomplishment. And I must mm -hmm. say, in my work, where I'm dealing with people with extreme anxiety, mm -hmm. okay, so we, I use some of the very things that you talk about because it's really important to help people contain their anxiety mm -hmm. and routines mm -hmm. and having a place to put things, even a place now, mm -hmm. now we have learned, they're learning, if we are out grocery shopping or even if somebody drops groceries off, we should be wiping them down outside before we bring them into our home. Yes. And then in our home, there should be a place where you put the groceries before you wash them. And so th these are all um, techniques that help and to make sure that you have that place where you can put them in, that's the, the sort of uh, disinfecting station mm -hmm. before they go into your fridge or into your cupboards. Yeah. So, so I, have, uh, I have two things to, I want to share. So just to... Uh, um, add to what Michael Sue just uh, talked about with the shopping uh, net cases now. And then uh, Susan, remind me to bring up um, uh, another recommendation for you for your clients because you're a realtor, so you're, you're working with clients. So I have a recommendation there as well. So in terms of shopping right now, so we hear a lot online that people are hoarding, 
right? So people are hoarding a lot of stuff, not just, you know, it, it's really beyond toilet paper and sanitizing wipes now. They're hoarding food and whatnot. And when you're, you know, even before all of this um, pandemic started, you know, people stockpile stuff, pantry load when things are on sale. And I always tell my clients this, when you're saving like a dollar here, you know, a 50 cents there, it's probably not worth it to pantry load and care and have all of those things uh, sitting there. And the reason being that it's actually a waste of money. Uh, I can't even tell you how many times I've worked with clients to declutter their pantry. And there are hundreds of dollars worth of food, like um, uh, shelf-stable foods, like uh, dry foods, canned foods that have expired, right? Because they've bloated the pantry so deep that they've forgotten that they're there. And so um, it sits there for sometimes years and it is expired. And when we're working together, we have to throw all those things out. And we can't even donate them because they're expired. You can't donate food products to food banks that are less than uh, six months uh, from the expiry because the food bank won't expect, uh, accept them either. So all of that goes into the, uh, the landfill and the waste system, which is um, pretty, really such a waste. So buy what you need. Um, and then when you run out or sh uh, close to running out, then you buy more. And our food supply system, there's no talk or discussion about that stuff uh, running low right now or, or that we're going to be short. The only reason why we are short and shelves are empty now is because people are hoarding them. Uh, and then overnight, the, uh, when the supply comes in, the grocery stores are um, restocking them. And the next day, pe more people come and hoard them and, you know, empty the shelves again. Completely unnecessary. You know, people are saying buy one or two weeks. If you don't want to go out every week, uh, then shop for two weeks worth. But there's no need to, to load up on food right now. Okay. Uh, the other thing with Susan, so um, just you know, you're working with clients, you're telling them that they need to declutter and get rid of stuff. Often when you say something like that, that you need to declutter, you need to get rid of stuff, it doesn't stick. Like people can't absorb that kind of advice because they're so overwhelmed. They're so overwhelmed, they have no idea where to begin. So, you know, just, just as much as uh, when I work with my clients, you have to tell them where to start and what to do. And some you need, they need a little bit more hand holding, right? And so um, that's why I'm saying it's very specifically um, that you have to start like with, I'm sorry, um, what was your name again? Cope, Cope Blanc? Adrian. Adrian. Oh, yes. sorry, Adrian. Yes, that's sorry, right. Adrian. Um, yes, so like just start by decluttering the toys first, right? Get very specific. And sometimes you just, what you want to do is you, you want to bring into your client's home or have for yourselves for the kids, right? Yeah, you know, like they can play basketball with it or something, but have four bins. One bin is to donate. One bin is to keep. One bin is to, um, to trash. Uh, and one bin, what's the other bin? Keep, donate, trash. I forget what the fourth one now. Oh my gosh, it just completely escaped my mind. Okay. <laughs> I donate. So uh, that's ceremoniously donate, okay, which is if things are in good enough condition. And I have SPCA donate because they're yes. to take ratty towels and ratty bathtubs, <coughs> I mean, bathrobes and sheets that you would be embarrassed to give to a human being because there's holes in it. But the shelters need stuff. Right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, oh, and the, the, the last bin is sell. If, if there's anything mm -hmm. that you want to sell, right? So right. again, like the kids, it's, that, that can be a fun game for the kids too, because it's a sorting system, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have those bins there, they can decorate those bins or those boxes that you have and uh, make that a project and then start to sort the uh, 
all those items into those four categories. Okay. <laughs> so Susan, I highly recommend that, you know, with your clients, actually bring those four boxes to them, label those four boxes to them. At least it'll start to help them think about their items in those four, four categories. Okay. Um, now, how many people here actually have a hard time of letting go of things? I can't hear. Yeah, we all yes. do, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy? Yeah. <laughs> Kathy, sorry? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm pretty good. I've caused it going good. through and getting rid of stuff. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Elsie? Yeah. Um, I, oops. Sorry, hi. hi. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually half and half. Half Pardon me, half half sometimes, yeah. right? Depends sometimes. on the Depends item, on what right? it is, yeah. Yeah. But Crazy? if I know certain things I, I don't use uh, mm -hmm. for the last five years, I, I will probably try to get rid of them. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, you know, one of the things I, I guess it can be seen as um, tough love. When I work with clients, really what I do is every object, I give them literally, you know, three to five seconds to make a decision. Are we keeping this or are we not keeping this? So this is what, you know, at this point in time, that this is what you're gonna have to ask yourself, right? Are we keeping this or are we not keeping this? And if, if you haven't used this one item for let's say a year, two years, three years, and you're, you're leaning on the side of keeping, then you need to ask yourself, why? Why are you keeping this? You haven't used this in the last, you know, lengthy period, why would you think you need to, to keep it? And so when I ask my clients that when I'm working with them, they often then, you know, correct themselves because our, I think that our, our, um, our immediate reaction is, I want to keep everything. I have it. I want to keep everything. And so, but when you challenge uh, yourself to think about it um, and keep your goal in mind, then it's easier to then sway yourself back to the side of, you know what, I really don't need this. I haven't used it in a, in a long time. I don't think that I will again. Uh, then it's time to, to pass it on to one of those four categories. Yeah. Does anybody else have any, anything else that you need support with? Susan, you're, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Let me see if I can unmute. Yeah, there I am. What can you do with books? I have so many clients that uh, oh, yes. that have yes. volumes and volumes of books. And uh, okay. where can you take those? Oh, gosh. Okay. So books, there are several places that you can donate them to. Uh, you can actually donate them to uh, any donation center. They will take books. Um, and then you can also donate them to uh, like senior homes. Uh, or senior centers, right? Uh, they will accept books and magazines. And then there's also another place that's called uh, Secondhand Books. And they will come and collect the books uh, as long as you put them into boxes. Whoops. Hello? What happened here? I don't know. Something did, somebody, did somebody share their screen? Oh, I might have. There we go. <laughs> okay. I, I, the whole time you've been talking, I've been trying to get my picture up, but I can't do it. <laughs> I think it's the apple. The apple is... Uh, oh, the apple, I'm told, is on the top, top corner as oh. opposed to the bottom corner. Okay. Yeah, that's the Mac, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, just to add to the books, Nina, I actually just went through this in my office. I had like a hundred books that I've never read and never will. Um, <laughs> I like to think I'm a reader, so I collect them, and then I never read them. Um, and I was able to take them to the Bradford Local Library, took them all. Yeah, there you go. So another place. Um, but, oh, yes, I remember uh, secondhand books. So, and I deal with clients the same way. They have hundreds and hundreds of books, and they just don't have the desire or the motivation to pack it up and bring it somewhere. So secondhand books, if you put them in boxes, they will come to the house and pick them up. Um, take all the books away free of charge. They don't charge you for them. But what they do is that it's, an, it's a nonprofit organization 
they uh, they sell the books uh, to make money, and then uh, they also then give books away to um, other charities and children in need. So it's a it's a great organization. I've used them a ton of times. So if you don't want to pack them up and take it anywhere, it's a great solution because then they'll come to your place to take it. Yeah. And books is always a challenge. And for people in Bear in Simcoe County in Barry, um, Rivendell Books um, at the No Frills um, on Well and you know the, the where Wellington um, No Frills is, mm -hmm. the bowling alley used to be there hundred years ago they take um second that you can sell your secondhand books if mm -hmm. she wants right yes yeah. great because you can also buy secondhand books there which yes. is not the purpose yes. of this call but yes. i'm just letting you know yes and the, you know here's the thing you can sell them at your own garage sale they can sell them at their own garage sale too for like 25 cents 50 cents but i always say you know that's that's a lot of work to sell something for 25 or 50 cents. It's just better to give it away to a good charity that's going to benefit from it, you know? Um, for those five, $10 you're gonna get for the hundred bucks, it's just a lot of effort. So I Anybody? finished one first. Perfect. Perfect. And I, the oldest bill I found was September, 2019. So that's not too bad. Oh, that's not so bad. Yes. And, you know, it could have been it could have been September 2015, but it wasn't. <laughs> so, what are you doing with those purses then, Michael? Oh, says. so what? I, here's the junk. So the junk is in uh, proper um, categories: the throw out, the paper, the uh, forty cents that I found, four toothpicks that are individually wrapped. So some of the things I will put in the proper place. The other is going in the garbage, and the purses I actually will. I, I will reuse them. I know that. Oh, good. Oh, good. So okay. The purses, but now at least they'll be clean and empty. There you go. There you go. Yes, we transfer stuff from purse to purse, and half the time there's so much well, stuff in it that I'm we've getting a lot right? well, I'm happy about that. Yeah. And the thing is, like, doing you know what I said earlier and what Michael Sue is doing now, we are all on a lot of Zoom calls right now, aren't we? So, you know, you can take those, that tiny little basket from somewhere right now and use to multitask and do that. You know, as women, we do that pretty well. And so, you know, why not try and declutter a drawer here or a basket there, right? Does anybody else have any other questions or anything, any, any way I can support you at all in any other area? Um, I guess just leading from decluttering is just to get to the organizing. So. Yes. I like ideally everything to have a spot, a home. Yes. Like yes. Do, you, do you recommend certain systems to do that in certain rooms or? Yes, so, um, <laughs> well, you're, I, if you're asking me then every room needs to have a system. I think so. <laughs> every room needs to be organized and every room needs to have a system. <laughs> and I'm all about that. I'm always looking for how can I make the space a little bit more efficient. Yeah. So, um, so, but again, don't overwhelm yourself. Pick a space right now. Mm -hmm. if, the, if, if the kids' toys is what's driving you crazy, focus in on that area and find an area for them to, uh, to store all their stuff. So a lot of it's for children and at us as adults, a lot of it is habit, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to start them on a habit. You know, like when you think about kids in daycare systems, uh, daycare organizations, they play with a lot of stuff, but at the end of the day, all the kids are asked to put their stuff away, put collectively work together to put all the toys and books and stuff away, right? So mm -hmm. that same system needs to happen in the home. They can play during the day, but you know, at the end of the day, they need to work together and put stuff away. Now, Putting stuff away means that you need to have a system for them to easily do so. So whether it's labeled with their stuff and their name on, in a cubby or a basket or a bin so that they know where to put stuff or, mm -hmm. you know, this, this shelf and the next couple of shelves are dedicated for books, uh, do that, you know. So um, you just have to label it and make it easier for them okay. to put things away. and. Now, kids' toys takes up so much space, crazy. So I, 
And this is this doesn't go just for toys, but for any any of us who have a lot of stuff, you have to take a look at it from um, a, a vertical space, right? I always recommend people use a, as much of their vertical space as possible. You know, you don't need to put things low. So when you have kids, you know, the youngest child, get shelves, get shelves. Uh, the youngest child should have the lowest shelf. Uh, the older uh, kids, you know, as long as it's reachable. Hi. Sorry, <laughs> as, that's okay. As long as they're able <laughs> to don't. reach it, right? <laughs> yeah. So the more you can use up your vertical wall with shelves. Mm -hmm. So if you can line your wall with some shelves, um, that way, uh, that way you can easily label the shelves, label the cubbies, and the kids can start to put that away, but make that a routine as a requirement. Whatever you take out, you need to put away. Now I have a 16 year old daughter and um, I challenge her to do that all the time. Is it difficult? Yes. Does she get, you know, a little bit snooty with me? Yes. <laughs> but you know what? This is my rule. Like these are the rules, you know, one, one of my, um, I, I think one of my, greatest achievement as a mom when she was little was that um, none of her toys were missing pieces because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, everything had to go back into its exact spot. Every little puzzle pieces went back into those little puzzle spots, right? Yeah. And uh, I was just so proud of myself for doing that, but that's because I'm just crazy and anal. <laughs> I get it. You've given her a great gift, uh, Nina. What's that? that? It's a wonderful, wonderful gift. Of what? How to do that. Oh. <laughs> How to get okay. in that pack. Um, I don't know if my family would think that it's a gift. Well, my family yeah, thinks I'm crazy. Eventually, eventually, they'll let us say, oh, God, it's a good thing I learned how to do this. Right, right. I think so at the end of the day, it is a good skill because they know where things are and they can find them. <laughs> exactly. And it's, it's a life skill. It really is yeah. a life skill because life if skill. you build that habit up with them at an earlier age, then hopefully mm -hmm. by the time they go to university and they're on their own, that they know how to do these things, right? Yeah. And ask, them, ask themselves those important questions. Do I really need it? Do I need mm -hmm. to love it? Do I, am I going to use it? Things like that, you know, those are all life skills. Yep. All right, can I give a progress report? Yes, please. I found three $10 off cards for fresh, not freshies, fresh restaurants in Toronto, which are vegetarian, vegan restaurants that I love. So there's $30. And I found a Starbucks card and a <laughs> McDonald's card. Those are found money. That's fantastic. Yeah, so you know, there's a real benefit to doing this. I think I just totally. made $40. I was just sitting on, uh, in, um, in a, another Zoom meeting and a financial advisor, Kristen, I don't, you know Kristen, um, she was saying too, look for, look for found money. Like, and obviously you found some. So I'm sure we all have some uh, $10, $20 hidden somewhere in our purses somewhere, right? <laughs> yep. Kathy, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, how do you uh, train a 58-year-old husband to... Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> okay, so can I share with you what I do? Can I share with you what I do? Because my husband, my, husband uh, my husband is 52. Okay. I shame him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so uh, uh, I guess a little while ago, we, we have a fairly good-sized hall closet. And then in our mudroom, we have, like, I have hooks, right, on the wall meant for temporary hanging of things, all right? And we have three people in the house. All the hooks were full, like full. And so I took a picture of it, I posted it, and I said exactly that. We have three people in the house. I don't understand why all these hooks are full all the time. There were like five coats there. None of them were mine. Yeah. Anyway, I posted it. I went shopping. I came back empty. Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly oh, being told, where did you move it to now? Well, where it belongs, in the basket or... That's right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, like, I'm pretty, with my own family, I'm pretty brutal. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to, so, because we are running out of time. Uh, and we're going to do this again. So don't worry, we'll come back uh, if, you, if this is uh, of interest to you. 
and uh, you need the support, I'm going to be here uh, this whole time, right? So uh, we'll set it up on a weekly basis if that's needed. So, so very quick story. Um, in our home, you know, sometimes my husband, our son, our daughter comes home, and instead of hanging their coats in the hall closet, which is like right there, they hang it on the banister. Drives me crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> like literally drives me bananas. And so when I can't handle it anymore, I open the front door and I take all the stuff and <laughs> throw it out the front door. <laughs> Guess who runs out to go and get them put in back in the closet? <laughs> 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 so yes, so obviously that's for fun and uh, all joking aside, I am pretty brutal with my family. And so because of that, they've learned the habit. They've, they've developed that habit to, to put things away. And you know, sometimes if I have to re resort to shaming, I will. Okay, well, I may have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so was this helpful to everybody? It was, yeah. it was certainly helpful to me. I'm glad. I'm glad. I need to tackle my pantry. I'm pretty sure I have a seven-year-old can of beans in there somewhere. <laughs> hey, so this is this is my plan for this week. On Friday, I'm going to go live on Facebook. So hopefully you'll join me there. Bring your laptop, bring your tablet, bring your phone, and we will clean out the fridge together. Oh, Ooh. fabulous. What time are you doing it? Uh, I think I have it scheduled for one. So that's what, that's my plan is we're going to do this together and you're going to get to see my very empty fridge. <laughs> oh, I would love that. I don't know what my calendar is, but I'll check, but that would be yeah. great. Yeah. And it's on Facebook live. So even if you can't catch it, uh, be there with me live and do, do the fridge cleaning together. Uh, you can watch it afterwards too, but it'll just be fun. And we're going to be doing this together. Right. Good. Okay. Great. All right. So are you Thank interested you. in doing this on a weekly basis? Would you like to come back? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yes. All right. So next week, because this is the first one, I know nobody knew what to expect. So next week, come back with some questions, you know, an area that you're, that, that you've been working on all week. And uh, if you're having any difficulties with that stuff, come back, ask me, I'm, I'm here to help. All right. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you. Take care. Have a great Thanks. afternoon. And Thanks. Nina, can Bye. I, um, can you call me right now? Cause I have some suggestions for you. Okay, super. All right. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Nice meeting you. Bye.